All right, everyone. Uh, great Ramsey Paul, who I actually uh, am co-host for on Happy Homelands, had a video the other day where he was ruminating on extraterrestrial life and, and is of the opinion, I believe, that it's unlikely that there's life out there. Now, let, let me uh, discuss my feelings about this. I believe that not only is it likely that there's other life in the universe, I think it's a certainty. I think it's a mathematical certainty. Um, we know that there is life because we're here. We might be NPCs, but we're comprised of organic, uh, mobile, uh, uh, moving, breathing material. Uh, well, most life forms have some sort of respiratory system, unless they're slime molds. Uh, uh, but we know that there's life here. The problem with looking out there and saying, well, we haven't gotten any radio signals we can positively identify from an extraterrestrial source, or at least, you know, one that's living. Uh, we haven't seen any planets in our region that appear to have ships orbiting around them or something. I, I, I call that a lack of perspective. Essentially, that would be like dipping a Dixie cup into the ocean, looking into the contents and saying, well, there's no fish in here. There's nothing interesting in here other than some microbes and salt water. So that's all that's in the ocean. Well, that's, that's, you're only sampling a really small amount. The problem is that our ability to look beyond our solar system is exceptionally limited. We can get a very hazy view of nearby star systems. That is a tiny drop in the bucket just of this one galaxy. This one galaxy, I guarantee you, this is a guarantee, uh, according to my understanding of logic and everything else under the sun. I guarantee you there's life on other planets within this galaxy. Now, am I claiming that it's intelligent life? That's, that's more up in the air. It's possible that intelligent life tends to, because of evolution uh, basically being based on competition and therefore potentially hostility, it's pretty likely that civilizations that hit like our level of technological finesse, once they've developed nukes basically or something akin to it, wipe themselves out. Or at least they keep knocking themselves back in technology over and over and eventually natural disasters take care of them. But we've had massive disasters on this planet and life is tenacious. Human life has become more tenacious because of the same technology that could arguably destroy us. Lower life is a lot harder to kill off. There are microbes a mile down in the crust of this earth that dwell only on absorbing radiation or chemical reactions uh, that don't need light, that don't need any other source. There are microbes in the deepest parts of the ocean. There's advanced life down there. There's life that has evolved in caves that are half a mile deep. Uh, turn completely white and, and blind and there's like little populations of fish that are genetically distinct that have been living in the same pool uh, less than a square mile of total area for the last million years in some cases and are evolving evolution is a wonderful thing and life is tenacious i have a feeling that there's probably already microbial life on the moon and mars simply because we've contaminated these particular bodies i think that we uh, life could spread actually from earth you think of a massive volcanic or, uh, explosion or something and some dust particles with microbes on them get shot out into space and float around. It is possible, however unlikely, that a particularly tenacious uh, uh, a microbe or, or something along those lines, a spore, uh, on a little tiny chunk of rock that's only, you know, a, a hundred atoms across or something floating through space, could land on another planet or land on an asteroid, go whizzing off, hit another planet, happens to hit in, an, in a slushy pool of, of ammonia and, and water, and spawns life. It's entirely possible that that happens, probably with regularity. The idea that we don't see life immediately around us in our solar system, which is basically all we can capably see, and that therefore there's no further life is, is sampling bias on a totally astronomical level. Pardon the pun. I think you'd find that there's life in the galaxy. And it's a virtual guarantee that not that far around, possibly in this galaxy, there's other intelligent life. Now, do I claim that this means little green men visit the planet? No. Because it's likely that even if they've developed the ability to go very far in space, like they've developed the ability to shoot a ship through a wormhole and travel from one end of the galaxy to the other instantaneously. It's wonderful. I'm trying to wrap my head around why they would come here. And if this life is scant, that is, most planets don't have life, and that certainly appears to be the case, it's going to take them a hell of a long time to explore this region of space, because they're probably exploring others at the same time. Uh, there wouldn't be very many of them. It'd be pointless. Uh, they probably just would rather structure their own surroundings uh, in such a way that they can live, or they've wiped themselves out. It is entirely possible. I mean, life r routinely, I'm sure, gets extinguished, too. Planet has spawned microbes. 
Um, they've spawned slime molds and grass and, and lower life forms, and it's sort of like, you know, primordial earth with the sulfuric seas and lightning storms and chemical volcanoes and weird shit like that. And then it gets hit by a giant asteroid or by a massive solar flare that scorches the whole surface into a sheen of lava for the course of several weeks and burns every goddamn microbe into non-existence. Well, it might take another couple billion years. Maybe it'll spawn life again. Hopefully the conditions are similar enough. Maybe it gets wiped out a second time. And take a long time. But if we look back, I would say this. Our planet has had life on it for billions of years. Despite that fact, over that very, very long span of time, it's never been completely destroyed. We've had mass die-off events. We're technically in one right now because we're in the Anthropocene age. Um, and yet it... it clings to existence. It hasn't gone anywhere. We've had super volcanic eruptions, massive asteroid strikes, including the one that arguably, although not provably, killed off the dinosaurs in part or parcel. Um, we've had the megafaunal extinction. We had, uh, I can't remember what it's called, fairly early on there was a huge proliferation of like amoebas and shit in the oceans and then most of them died off, at least in the stratum we think. There's been like five or six mass extinction events throughout the last couple billion years. But despite that fact, life itself is still there. I think life is far more tenacious than people think. I think when it arises, if it doesn't experience a major holocaust in the first million years of its existence, it will tend to evolve, promulgate, and at the very least on a microbial level, the planet would be flush with all sorts of flora and fauna by that point. I think that life, once it arises, I think for it to remain for long periods is the norm. Because the things that happen in space, again, you know, 10 mile asteroids, super volcanoes, th those things are scant. Now keep in mind, there's another bias that we have. We look at the world around us and the type of life that has evolved here, and we assume, therefore, that life requires liquid water, has to be in the Goldilocks zone, has to be of, of a certain form, there have to be certain chemicals present. We know that that leads to life, but we don't know that that's the only way it can arise. There could be silicon-based life forms out there that are what we would resemble as computers that have become self-aware. Why not? We know that it's possible to create computers. We know that we're, we're capable of creating a computer that essentially is quasi-biological. It's capable of basic AI interacting with its surroundings, attempting to find whatever it uses as sustenance, electricity, capable of maintaining itself. They're probably 10, 20 years out from self-maintaining robots, self-replicating robots. It won't be in an organic sense, but they'll be capable of, maybe they can literally give birth. They'll be able to breed with one another, cross over their information, pass it along passively towards one another by uh, hooking a wire between the two of them. They'll be capable of doing things humans biologically at the moment can't do. By the way, there's a precedent for this. Bacteria are capable of exchanging genetic information in that manner. They're capable of basically a crude form of mating when you think about it. It's just they don't get any orgasm out of it. Very, very sad for bacterium. Um, I, I, I would challenge the notion that looking at the immediate space around us has any relevance. We're looking at one tiny part of one run, mundane galaxy in a mundane part of the universe out of how many pentillions or whatever it is of galaxies that are out there. And by the way, I've got a further thing to say. I don't believe the universe is finite. I think that when we're talking about the universe, what we're really doing is we're, again, artificially limiting ourselves to looking at the area of background microwave radiation that seems to surround this roughly quasi-spherical shape that we know as the universe, with all these various galaxies and so forth, nebula. I challenge the notion that that's singular. In the course of three-dimensional space, and I don't mean the universe or matter or anything, I just mean the three-dimensional space capable of being occupied by a star or a galaxy or something. I choose to believe that it is non-limited. Uh, 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 I choose to believe it's infinite. The expanse of space capable of being inhabited, I don't believe has an edge. There is no end to space. It's possible that our universe isn't even really discrete, it's just an area of space that happens to have suffered a massive Big Bang, what we term it, or, or something akin to that, and that that's not singular but happens elsewhere too. What if you have some sort of unknown physical process, it causes in an area of complete vacuum, it causes a Big Bang. At the edges, where those edges smash into the edges of another Big Bang zone, they compact, they begin to merge, and they form another Big Bang. What if it's just sort of an oscillation, an undulation of matter and energy that has no real limit and therefore it, it, it is completely conserved, it's no longer a closed system, uh, it's a completely open and limitless one, 
such that basically the universe is just one big oscillation for the rest of eternity and always was there. And when we're talking, it's difficult for us to wrap our minds around the infinite. We can't really fathom it. I would hesitate to say, and this is a paradox, this is one of the paradoxes that leads me to believe in potentially the spiritual, which is that it's actually within the realm of math. I can't reconcile there as being a beginning of time, a beginning of existence, because it doesn't make sense. You know, what came before that? Technically, you're saying there is nothing. How did it come to exist in the first place? It shouldn't technically be. Or if it is infinite, you should have passed an infinite amount of time before the Big Bang, and therefore we shouldn't be here because you're not supposed to be able to traverse an infinite linear function. Uh, or the only way to reconcile this, ironically, is string theory, <laughs> in which case death is probably an illusion. Your existence is not singular. You're simply perceiving it as singular. It almost begs for the existence, if not of a god, at least a creative force, that exists outside of the realm of the physics we even understand. Well, we can get into so many weird fucking, uh, uh, argue we can get into the ancient uh, aliens theory on steroids with this one. What I would say, keeping it to the mundane, though, I believe that the universe or, or existence is limitless, and therefore there should be an inexhaustible number of planets out there to spawn life. When it spawns, it tends to, in my opinion, be a long-term thing, if it gets off the ground. If, if it gets through infancy, it tends to preserve itself for a very long time. That will tend to spawn intelligent life, which will then tend to wipe itself out. A few species may eventually have gotten past this, and you could have, basically, fucking uh, uh, spacefaring aliens out there on giant motherships. <laughs> Why would they come here? I choose to believe that if they knew about our existence at all, they'd shrug at us. It's, oh, look at these quaint uh, cave people on this planet. They call it Earth. Looks more like a pile of shit to them. That's about all. Peace out.